Boom. Ha <laughs> ha. Boom, traders. Here we go. Yes. Once again, welcome to another live Q&A session with Oliver Velez. My name is Oliver Velez, of course. And you guys know by now, I am your trader for life. I'm your trader for life. I'm your mentor for life. All right? Right here on YouTube. All right, guys. We have an interesting, very interesting topic to funnel our questions through, okay? This live Q&A session is going to be centered around the topic of the most common trading mistakes. I have traders, listen to me carefully. I placed my very first trade in March of 1981. I'm willing to bet that most of you weren't even born in 1981. But that's right, my very first trade in, in March of 1981, the stock was Eli Lilly, symbol LLY. What's interesting about that initial purchase is that I still have it. Not only do I hold Eli Lilly as a stock since 1981, as a form of nostalgia, all right? But I have also made heavier and heavier investments um, throughout the early years in that same stock. I still own the very first stock I ever purchased in my entire life, right? And probably will continue to do so, all right? But I made my first, tr my first transaction in the markets in 1981. Guys, I was de began to develop as a trader and I landed after years of losing, after years of making every possible mistake you could make, after years of hemorrhaging money, I began to gain my footing. And I managed to, after many, many attempts, I managed to land my first professional trading job on Wall Street in December of 1986. All right. I'm telling you this history for a reason. I went on from 1986 to build up a rather, a rather decent reputation on Wall Street. So much so that firms from all the, I mean, traders from various different firms would come to me for trading advice, some trading training. And so this became so prevalent that I decided to take one of the biggest risks of my life which was to leave my leave Wall Street and start my own Wall Street trading advisory firm. It was scary because I was doing extraordinarily well and I was going to leave all of that behind to start my own company. Well, in September of 1994, that move became a reality. And from that particular point, I began training virtually, traders from virtually every major Wall Street firm in existence. And for a 12-year period, I was completely booked. Firms would send me their traders from all over the world to train. I did that for 12 years. Now, why am I saying this? Because, guys, not only did those formative years of me trying to gain my footing, not only did that really reveal to me what the most common errors that I was making, it revealed to me, wow, this is what was holding me back. This is what was holding me back. This is what was holding me back. This is what made trading successfully um, far more difficult than it needed to be. Not only was that a very, very informative period of my trading journey. But my whole 12-year period of training professional traders on Wall Street, yes, they make many of the same mistakes, not all of them, but many of the same mistakes. And after this 12-year period, I began to turn my sights 
to the everyday man or woman. I got tired of training professionals. I got tired of making, helping to make wealthy people wealthier, rich, young kids richer. I wanted to begin focusing on bringing Wall Street to Main Street. And I've been doing that, I would say, in earnest from 2006, seven, where I gave it all of, started giving it all of my might to this very day. And so there are three, I would say there are three periods in my trading career that have helped me put together the most common errors I've seen over basically a 40 year plus period. And I'm gonna share some of those. These are not all of them, but these are the most common, okay? I'm gonna share the most common, and then we're gonna pick these things apart. You're gonna ask me questions about each one of these things, all right? And before I get started with this, I do want you to know that I did do a specific video that does focus in more detail on each one of those things, and I will try to find that and make sure that in the recorded form of this, because we're live right now, that will show up um, either in one of these corners up there um, so that you can click on that and do a deeper dive into some of these most common errors, okay? All right. So I don't have anything written down here today only because I would prefer that you go to those videos and do the deep dive. So I'm gonna to talk to you face to face. But grab something to write with, grab a pen, grab, some, grab a pad or, or a piece of paper. Let's take some notes on these things, okay? Grab the beverage of your choice, and let's get ready to delve into the most common mistakes that traders make. Okay, number one, guys, number one. It's very, very ubiquitous in the space. No training. This is the, this is, I, I made this the number one most common error because I'm willing to bet more than 90% of the people in the markets today trying to do this properly, earnestly trying to make money, they have zero training. This is absurd. The idea that you can come into my world, a world that is filled with some of the brightest minds on planet Earth, a world, my world, that's filled with sharks and people who've been doing this year after year after year after year, professionals that have billions of dollars at their disposal, all the most competitive market in the entire world, you believe that you can come into this market and take food off of my table with zero training. You are delusional. I'm sorry, I have to say it. You're delusional. Just because you've opened up a TD Ameritrade account, you're gonna step into my world. I've been doing this for 40 years. It is disrespectful for you to think that just because you've opened up a TD Ameritrade account or an interactive broker's brokerage account that you're gonna step into my world and come into my house and take food off of my table. It is disrespectful and it is the height of naivety. Do you understand what I'm saying? No one believes that that is possible when it comes to becoming a doctor. Oh, I can do it myself. I can learn myself. I can watch YouTube videos and learn how to be a heart surgeon. Yeah, right. No one believes that you can do this when it comes to being um, a lawyer, all right? Your life is on the line. Would you like the, would you like to hire a lawyer who's learned the law from YouTube, from reading a book, from studying charts? No, right? No one expects a top level athlete, do you understand? To be that way without years and years 
and years of training. It is disrespectful for you to think that this is something you can do without training because it's not going to happen. I promise you it's not going to happen. Now, everyone wants to point to, to say, Oliver, but I know many traders who had no training and they, make, they made a lot of money. BS. It doesn't happen. And let me tell you something. I'm not saying that there aren't people who've gotten lucky. I'm not saying that there aren't people who put a lot of money into the market and they just got the timing right by chance because a rising tide raises all the boats, the good ones and the stupid ones too, all right? That's not what I'm talking about. The exception doesn't prove the rule. Do you understand this? You can't be good at anything really without training. You can't be at the top of your game in anything in life without the proper amount of training. And if you think you can, I am telling you, those with the proper training will eat your lunch every single time. You will only be a depositor in the market, all right? Because those who are trained and, and, and trade properly, they don't make deposits. Do you understand that? There are no, there's no depositing in the market. Only losers deposit into the market. Only people who are not trained deposit into the market. Professionals don't deposit. Do you understand? They only withdraw. All right? Now, we as professionals need depositors. We need that fresh group of depositors that, that's untrained to come into the markets every single hour of the market's existence. That's our food. That is whom we feed off of. Do you understand? So depositors are not bad. They're necessary for the winners because the winners are not going to make a deposit. The last deposit I made into a brokerage account was 1994, right? We don't deposit. Do you understand? You deposit. We withdraw. And this idea that you can learn this yourself is very, very wrong. Now, I do want to say something about this training, this no training part here. I want to say something about this. Training is different and apart from education. Education you today can do on your own. Let's not get it twisted. Do not get education and training mixed up. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, you can become educated via YouTube today. Thank God for the internet. It has changed the way we think, the way we live our lives. It has revolutionized life. And I thank my lucky stars every single day that I grabbed hold of the life-changing effects of the internet very, very early in its adoption curve. All right? I was one of the first firms in the industry to have a, in 1993, a website, okay? So I think it's important for us to make a distinction between becoming educated. You see, because in the past, the education rhetoric was you had to go to university, you had to go to school or whatever to become educated. The internet changed all of that. You do not need to go to school to become educated. You might need to go to school to get a certification, to get some validation through a certificate or a graduation of some sort, but education, you can get that on your own. So you can become educated about markets on your own. You do not need anyone for that. But I'm not talking about education traders. I'm talking about training, all right? Let me give you an, let me give you an example of, of the difference. All right. When a, when a student wants to become a doctor, they get accepted into medical school. All right. They go to classes. They go to lectures. They listen to very relatively elderly men, some of which used to be doctors, some of which don't have never been doctors, teach things like Latin medical terminology, teach things like an, a, um, anatomy, teach things like various um, medicines and this and that, 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 that's the education part. Do you understand? So in the classroom, taking notes, 
doing quizzes, doing exams, all right? Listening to your lecturer, all right? Studying in a group with your friends. That's the education part. Now, in trading, you can do the education part all alone. You do not need anyone to become educated. And it, in the doctor's field, maybe you can't do it alone, but you get the point I'm saying. But if is a student who's gone through medical school a doctor? No. Education does not make you a doctor. Being educated in medical school does not make you a doctor yet. What are you missing? Internship. You're missing an internship. You're missing a residency in a hospital with real patients, with real sicknesses, with real diseases, with real patients, with real solutions. That's the training part. So when you become an, a doctor, there's two parts. There's the education part and then the training part where you're in a real hospital. They call that in the medical term, in the medical field, your residency. You'll do a two to four year residency before you become a full fledged doctor. So education first, training second, before it's possible to become what you want to become. What I am saying is that the educational part of trading, you can do all alone. You cannot do the training part all alone. Do you know why? Because you can't see yourself. It is not possible in this universe to see yourself. Do you understand this? Do you understand this universal truth, this universal fact? We have not been given dominion over the ability to see ourselves. You have never seen your face. Think about this. You have never seen your face ever in your entire life. Do you know why? Because you can't. And if that's true below, then it's true above too. That which is true below is true above. That which, which is true above is true below. You've never seen your face. You've seen the reflection of your face. You've looked at yourself in the mirror and said, wow, that's me, but touch the mirror and tell me you're touching you. Are you, t are you seeing yourself or are you seeing the reflection of yourself? You've never seen yourself. We have not been given the ability on this planet, on this green earth, in this universe, the ability to see ourselves. This is why every professional athlete in the entire world has a coach has a mentor, has someone watching them. They're at the top of their game. They're in the top point, 0.5% of all human beings on, on earth in that activity. And every single one has someone watching them, training them. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need someone else. This idea that you can train yourself is freaking false. And if you don't believe me, you will ultimately come to the conclusion that I'm right, but it's going to be a very expensive lesson. Number one, no training. Error number two, inadequate capital. Guys, let me just tell you this. I have seen all the stories. Oh, I made $2 million with $500. I made riches with nothing. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I'll buy that. No. Guys, listen. I only know to a certain extent how things operate on this planet. I don't know how things are on another planet in another galaxy. We have yet to do intergalactic travel, right? We're waiting for maybe Elon Musk or Bezos or someone to break through with this. But I have not done intergalactic travel yet. So I don't know what happens up there. But here on this, on this planet of ours, you need money to make money. Make no mistake about it. Don't let anyone fool you by telling you, you don't need a lot of money to make a lot of money. 
I would run 180 degrees in the opposite direction if someone told me that. You can make riches with nothing, run, just turn around and just run as fast as you can the other way because that's a scam. The lower echelon of the masses throughout history have been duped for thousands of years with this false message. I will give you something big and you don't need to give me something big. No, it doesn't work like that. The universe doesn't work like that. Sir Isaac Newton taught us, right? For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. You need money. You need, you need money to make money. That's equal. Do you understand? But when you come with this insignificant little drop in the bucket and you think that you're going to drop this in the bucket of life, in the, buck, in the universe's bucket, not practically nothing, but you expect the universe to give you riches and you've only dropped a little tiny drop in the bucket? That is being a freaking thief. It doesn't work that way. Your universe doesn't work that way. A farmer toils, toils, toils for six months first and then gets a harvest, right? For months. It's the harvest for months, all right? You can't show up to a gunfight with a freaking toothpick and think you're going to win. I am sorry. They're the number one reason that most businesses in the entire world fail. Do you know that the majority of businesses that open up, grand opening, grand closing, most businesses fail. Most. It's well over 90% of all businesses that start fail inside of five years. Why? What's the number one reason? There are multiple reasons. Shoot, I'm spilling my tea. There are multiple reasons. But the number one reason is what? Inadequate capital, undercapitalized, not enough capital to go through the hardships, not enough capital to take a blow, not enough capital to deal with something that you didn't ex expect, not enough capital to deal with a curveball, not enough capital to deal with a downturn in the economy. And this is the same thing that traders do. They come to the game with this little tiny amount and think that that's it's possible to win with that. It's not. First of all, a small amount of money will make you a worse trader, trader because it forces you to trade in gripped in fear. It forces you to be jittery. It forces you to sell when you're not supposed to sell. It forces you to be scared when you're not supposed to be scared. It forces you to snatch at your profits before you should be snatching at your profits. It forces you to do every single thing wrong. And I'm sorry, I know most people don't have the amount of money that's necessary to start this off right. I know that. That's why I created my program that provides the training and provides the capital. Now there's no excuses. But don't let anyone fool you guys. If you're showing up with a little bit of money, it is a guaranteed. I will bet against you every single time. Do you understand? And I will win. I will win. Okay. Terry Johnson is saying, but we lack discipline. It's not because you lack discipline. You can be the most disciplined trader in the world. And with a little bit of money, you're going to lose. Listen, let me just say this. Let's just put it this way. All right. I have a $5 million trading account. If you and I come to the same stock, right, at the same time, and you put your $500 up against me, guess what? You leave with nothing. Virtually every single time. It's not going to happen. Do you understand? And on top of that, if you bring your $500 into the market, boop, and I show up, and you also have no idea what you're doing because you've never been trained. That's just a guaranteed loss, right? 
you're my food. Now, some people say, well, Oliver, what's the appropriate amount? Well, I start every single trader off with a minimum of $50,000, and that's not even enough, but it's a great training amount. So every person gets $50,000 in my program, every single one. It's not real at first. It's in a very professional simulator, but once they graduate the simulator, that $50,000 is real. They start there. And they hit certain milestones, that 50 becomes 100,000, becomes 250,000, becomes half a million, 500,000, becomes a million, becomes a million five, like that. So they grow their way into bigger and bigger amounts of capital. But guys, listen, I am telling you, these waters are very shark infested, and your little drops are gonna do absolutely nothing for you. And if you don't believe me, and you've been doing this with a little bit of money, all I can ask is, how's it going? I know the answer to that, all right? Lack of the, lack of, lack of the proper amount of capital. Third thing, unrealistic expectations, all right? Everyone wants to win first. That is unrealistic. Oh my God, traders, I'm gonna get to your questions, but my God, this is a big one. You come into the market with no training, with a little tiny piece of money, and you want to win first. Are you freaking kidding me? Like, what planet do you live on? That's like saying, listen, all right, I bought a pair of basketball shoes, my first ones, <laughs> got some basketball shoes. It's the first time I'm on a basketball court with a basketball, but I've invested in some basketball shoes. Now, let me, let me go win. Really? Against professional teams? Really? You don't win in anything at first. Why would you expect to be able to win first in trading? I don't understand this. Like, when it comes to other areas of life, everyone is very bright and intelligent. If I were to say, are you, are you a, an amazing lawyer on your first attorney on your first day? No. Are you an amazing doctor on your first day? No. Are you an amazing soccer player on the first day you hit the field? No. Should you expect to be amazing in the first day, the first week, the first month? No. Should you, should you be able to start winning after a month of this activity? Everyone's going to say no. Every, everyone's bright when it comes to everything else, but they lose this intelligence somehow when it comes to the stock market or comes to trading. I don't get it. This false notion that you can be good at first, this false notion that you can start winning right away, where does it come from? Who were your parents? Who taught you this? We don't win in anything at first. Nothing in life. We suck. We suck in the beginning of everything. And listen, everyone could say, well, you know, you can, I can show you an exception. Uh, uh, this person was just gifted. I'm not talking about the exception. I'm talking about you, and you're not the exception. The exception doesn't prove the fact. The exception, one exception out of millions does not prove the reality of what I'm saying, or does not disprove the reality of what I'm saying. You're not going to win. You lose your way to success in the beginning of this journey. Do you know that? You go through loss. This is life's message, traders. Think about it. In order to leap high, I want to leap high, I have to first squat. Isn't the universe, isn't life, isn't the laws of the universe telling us something with that? In order to go higher, I must first go lower. In order to plant a tree, I must first take an acorn and put it down into the ground, into the darkness below the level zero, the ground is level zero, it has to go below zero. And it has to stay below zero and grow in the dark, in the dirt. And guess which direction it grows first? Does it grow up first? No, it grows down first, 
loss first. You can't win in the beginning. This is why you shouldn't use your own money. You should use mine or someone else's. Do not use your, lose your own money. Why? Because you know you're going to lose. Well, if, you've, if, if, you're, if you're one of mine, you know you're going to lose. We lose first. In order to, to propel a, a, a bow and arrow, I must pull it back first, and then it goes forward. In order to jump over a puddle, I must step back first and then leap over the puddle. What is life telling us? That in order to advance, you must first go backwards. I shoot a gun by pulling the lever back to propel the bullet forward. Everything is backwards first. The prodigal son in that proverbial story called the prodigal son, the prodigal son lost his fortune first to then come back to receive the highest honor in his father's house. The loss was first and then coming back. And I don't know if you know the story of the prodigal son, but upon seeing his son come back after losing the father's fortune, after losing his share of the fortune, he tells the other brother who never left, prepare a feast. My son has returned. His son returns. Upon entering the home, the father gives him the robe, signifying that he is now the master of the house. The father gives him his ring, signifying that he, all of his decisions will be obeyed now, that he is the leader of the kingdom, of the house. The other brother got angry, but, but dad, I, I never left you. Why does he get the honor? Because he lost first. And the son that never lost, that played it safe, doesn't deserve the honor. We lose our way to profits. We lose our way to success. We lose our way to proficiency. We lose our way to consistency. We lose our way to greatness. You're going to lose first. And God help you, traders. If you get lucky and you win first, I feel sorry for you. Because that win is not yours. And let me tell you something. When you get something in this universe, and you get something in the market, which is a microcosmic version of the universe, when you get something that's not yours, that you don't deserve, that you didn't lose your way to it, that you need to earn it, you had better let it go or give it back right away because when it's time to pay for that, oh my God, not oh my God, oh my God, that payment is going to be huge. You're going to curse the day that you got that. Look at all of the lottery winners. Most of them wind up in worse position. They curse the day they won the lottery. They didn't earn it. They didn't lose their way to that win. Do you understand what I'm saying, traders? These unrealistic expectations that you win first, you don't win first, you lose first. We must lose our life to gain our life You've heard that before, right? Okay. All right. Unrealistic. So I did no training, inappropriate capital, unrealistic expectation. I'm out here to win. Yeah, right. Next. Okay. Now we're going to get to the technical things. All right. Those are the non-technical things. Now, I know you guys are waiting for this part. Oliver, let's start talking about the market, please. Okay, let's start talking about the market now. Market mistakes, okay? I might need, uh, I might need us to go to um, 
trucks here to show you some things here. Yeah, I might need that. Okay, so let me see if I can do this. So look, technical error number one, trading against position. Very common error with people who are not trained. Trading consistently against the position of a stock. First of all, most people don't even know what position is. What do you mean, Oliver, trading against position? Right? They don't even know what that is. Most of you are confused, which is sad. All right? That's a very common mistake. Let me try to show you this. I hope I can, uh, I hope this works here. Let's see. All right, boom. All right, we got it here, right? I think we got it. Boom. Okay. So I hope you see Apple here on the chart. Let me show you what position is. There is There are two moving averages on my chart, all right, on this chart. First of all, we're looking at a five-minute chart, all right? And it doesn't matter the time frame, all right? The blue moving average that you see here, all right, this blue moving average here, this is the 20-period moving average, 20-period simple moving average. And this red one is the 200 simple moving average, right? Now, position is very simple. I'm going to give you a simplistic, it's a little bit more detailed than this. My traders know this, but I'm going to give, since I'm speaking to many people who are not my traders, I'm going to give a more generic definition of position. Basically, if the stock is under these two moving averages, your position is negative. If the stock is above these two moving averages, your position is positive. So negative position here and positive position there. If you are under both of these moving averages, you're in negative territory or negative position. If you are above these two moving averages, you are in positive position. That's an oversimplification, but it will suffice. Do you understand? It will suffice. Okay. Now, what do I mean by trading against the position? If you're under in negative territory, the best odds are to bet down. But every one of you guys who are not trained like to be fancy and try to pick the bottom. Oh, I'm going to pick the bottom. It's going to reverse for me. I'm going to pick the bottom. Trading against position. When it's as close to taking candy from a baby, it's just to play the position the way it's supposed to be played. If you're in negative position, you're, the majority of your trade should be betting to the downside. If you're in positive position, the majority of your, your plays should be betting to the upside. These should be bets to the downside. And so my traders know that you come in on fat red bars in negative territory. So look at, look at the first bar of Apple, fat red bar, in negative territory. I have a match. Negative territory, negative bar, boom! That's like taking candy from a baby. Negative territory, negative bar, match, boom! Okay? Now, the other thing my traders know is when you, if you start to get green in negative territory, you just wait for red to wipe out green. Boom! Boom. So we come in negative territory, fat red bar, boom. Negative territory, red wipes out green. Red wipes out green here. Red wipes out green there. You see what I'm saying? Red wipes out, look at, look, red wipes out green right there. 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 Just these are all bets that are relatively easy on the down so now this one's a little tricky so i'm going to erase this one because that's above the moving average so let's just keep it simple and you just wait for it to drop back below and start playing the color game look boom 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 some of you know what that means all right guys so but no no 
millions of untrained traders. I'm going to find the bottom. They try to get cute. They try to get fancy. Too cute for your own good. All right, I'll tell you a quick story about being cute, guys, right? I'll tell you a quick story about being cute here. All right, my mother, I grew up in New York, okay? I grew up in New York. And, um, you know, in the winters in New York, it's freezing cold, freezing, all right? People in Canada would say, ah, Oliver, come on. You're a wuss. You don't know what freezing is. But anyway, for me, it's freezing in New York, right? Anyway, so... I used to hate going to school all bundled up with the stupid little hat and the scarf and the big giant mittens. I just thought it looked, it wasn't cool. I had style, man. It, was, it just wasn't cool to be walking like a little bozo with a big giant hat on and mittens. I just didn't like it. And so every time I wanted to leave the house, I would try to leave without this stuff, even though it was cold. And my mother would stop me. Boy, where do you think you're going? School? You're not going to school like that. Get over here. And she would just bundle me up. She would just turn me around and wrap me up with this big giant scarf, put this big giant hat on, and my face would reflect how disappointed I am, right? And she would look at my face and say, let me tell you something, boy. It's too cold out there to, to, to be cute today. <laughs> it's too cold, Oliver, to be cute. All right? Sometimes you can try to be too cute. Sometimes it's not time to be cute. When you are in negative position, it's not time to be cute and think that you're smart enough to pick the bottom. Just play the position. Most of the time, if you play the position, trading, the complexity in trading softens. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right, let's get back to the charts here. Sorry for interrupting with my story. And then my mother would probably be embarrassed if, uh... all right. Good. Okay, so back to the charts, right? So let me see if I can, so let me see if I can give you an example of, let's see if I can give you an example. What? There's nothing up. <laughs> I'm gonna try to find something up. But let's just we can we can look at we can look at Apple over a different time frame, right? So, so here, guys, look. Here is your your twenty your two hundred, right? Your twenty, right? Now, when you are above both, you're in positive territory. So, when there's positive, when your stock is in positive territory. Power green bar, boom! See, power green bar, boom! Power green bar, boom! Power green bar, boom! But somewhere near the 20, not away from the 20 like that. Power green bar, boom! 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 It's like freaking taking candy from a baby, no? My 12-year-olds can do this, and they do. You guys know I have a trading kids program, right? I have over 300 kids that probably can out trade all of you. They don't overcomplicate things. Oh, Oliver, the, the big green bar is above both of the moving averages. I'm buying. Boom, 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 boom. As long as it's near the 20, boom. They don't overcomplicate things. Do you know? You understand what I'm saying? But no, no, everybody wants to try to be cute and short. I'm shorting. I'm going to go short. Look at the red. I'm going to go short here. It's, it broke below the 20. I'm going to go short. <sighs> Look at this red below the 20. I'm going to go short. <sighs> Look at this top. I'm going to go short. <sighs> you know, they get lucky every now and then. But that's not the go-to play. You, so most people don't even know what position is. Most people are playing against position. So think about this. You have no training. You don't have the appropriate amount of capital. All right? You have unrealistic expectations that you're going to win now. And you have no freaking idea 
what position is. Therefore, you play against position all the time. Like the odds just keep getting worse and worse and worse. Okay, what's the next thing? You trade against the 20 period moving average. So the last one was you trade, the traders trade against position. This one is you trade against the 20 period moving average. Now look at the 20 period moving average of Apple here, right? Here's the 20 period moving average. When that 20 period moving average is rising, you should be a buyer. When it is declining, you should be a seller. When it's declining, you should be a seller. But in this scenario, the 20 is rising. Oh, no. But here comes most traders trying to be too cute for their own good, playing against the 20. Let me tell you something. You will get, you will win every now and then playing against the trend, against the 20 period moving average. But the 20 period moving average will dominate you over time. Think about this. I want you to imagine something. All right. I want you to imagine something here, guys, right? Imagine something this. Imagine this. Okay. If you were on a little tiny, a little tiny cliff, not too high, right down below is this powerful river, a powerful river, and it's moving this way, powerfully this way. And you're looking down at this river and you, you want to jump into the river. Now, you plan it and you count to three. One, two, three, and you jump in the river. Which way are you going to go? The river's going to take you that way. Whether you want to or not, you're going that way. That's a 20 period moving average. Now, get this. What if you don't want to jump in? but you accidentally slip on a loose rock and you fall in by mistake, which way are you gonna go? The same way, on purpose, the same way, mistake, the same way, trip, the same way, backflip in the same way, front flip in the same way, reverse dive in the same way, You can be sloppy and make a mistake and slip into a stock. But if you slip in the right direction of the 20, odds are you're still going to win. This is, the, this is the whole point of that corny little analogy I told you, that metaphor. If you play with the 20, you can be sloppy and still win. If you play with the 20 most of the time, you cannot even be precise and still win. You can make mistakes and still win because the very current just takes you and your mistakes with it. But God help you if you are consistently playing against the current. God help you if you're consistently playing against the 20. You're going to lose your entire financial life doing that. So playing against position and playing against the 20 period moving average. Two powerful technical common errors. Do you understand? All right. Good. Good. All right, let's see. Let's do this. What's the next thing? Losing more than one bar. How many times have I talked about this here on this channel? I can't even count. If you consistently lose more than one bar in trading, you're toast. You can have the right training. You can have the right amount of capital. You can even play in the right position. You can even play with the 20 period moving average, but if you don't know how to protect yourself when during the times that it doesn't work because nothing is 100%, all of that's for naught. The right money is for naught. The right training is for naught. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
You can have everything right, but if you get this one wrong, you're still done. Let me tell you what, well, let me talk to you about what I mean by, by losing one bar. If you buy this bar, boom, you, you should not, once if the stock breaks that bar, you're out immediately. Move on, all right? Lick your wounds, suck it up, be a man, be a woman, understand that everything can't be a win. This is life and move on. Don't sit there and pray, don't hope, don't stick your head in the sand like an ostrich and think that when, hoping that when you pull your head out, the situation's different. Hope is a dangerous thing in trading. In other parts of life, it's okay, but in trading, hope is a dangerous thing. And Somehow, untrained traders, they hope in negative territory and they fear in profitable territory. They have the whole freaking game backwards. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're not supposed to hope in negative territory. You're supposed to fear in negative territory. You're supposed to hope that you gain more after a gain. Oh, I'm up in the trade. Maybe I can get more. You should hope in positive territory. Oh no, but the untrained souls out there, they fear in profitable territory by snatching at their gains. I, I fear that it's gonna disappear. But when they're negative, they hope that it turns around. They hope they recoup their loss. They hope the situation improves. They've got the freaking game backwards. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't lose more than one bar, all right? Boom, you buy that bar, there's your stop under that bar. You buy that bar, there's your stop under that bar. You buy that bar, there's your stop under that bar. You buy this bar, there's your stop under that bar. Do you understand? Don't lose more than one bar. You buy this, this, and let me just tell you this. If you can limit your losses, all of them, almost all of them, almost all of them, to one bar, your wins are gonna be eight bars, 10 bars, 12 bars, two bars, four bars, one bar, 40 bars, 20 bars, but every single loss is one bar, one bar. You're already a profitable trader. You're a profitable trader with the one bar loss rule because you don't need skill to capture a four bar run, a six bar run, a 10 bar run, a two bar run, a three bar run. You don't do anything to produce the run to the upside. The only thing you do is cut when you're supposed to cut. It's the stock's responsibility to go up. It's your responsibility to kill the game when the stock is not performing properly. Traders that are untrained, they get their roles wrong. They think they take responsibility for the wins. It, it's not you that's winning. It's the market. You can only cut the loss. The mar if, a, if Apple goes up $4, what did you do except pray? Nothing. You didn't throw billions of dollars at, the, at Apple to make it go up $4, did you? No, all you did was pray. You did freaking nothing. But if Apple drops a dollar and you cut it and now it's down $4, you did something. Your job is the loss side. The stock's job is the win side. Make your losses, most of your losses, limited to one bar and you're gonna be just fine. But most of you don't do that. Most of you don't do that. All right, one last one, and then we're gonna go to some questions. One last one, all right? And this one I don't need charts for. So I'm gonna bring you back my face, okay? My face, that's right. Last one thinking. That's right. Most common error is thinking. Thinking too much of yourself. Thinking that you know. Thinking that you... Thinking is your worst enemy in trading. Professionals don't think. Oh, that surprises you? Well, it shouldn't. Professionals don't think. They've left thinking. They're beyond thinking. You ever hear the term in professional sports, in the zone? Yes, there's no thinking in the zone. 
When a high-level professional is in the zone, he's not thinking, well, let me put my left foot here and then let me plant my right foot about eight inches over here. Let me put my left arm out here. They are not thinking. They're in the moment. It's spontaneous. It's unconscious competence. Do you understand what I'm saying? Unconscious competence. You have unconscious competence in your life every single day. So you could, guys, some of you ladies, you are in a car. I've seen you. I've seen this. I've seen you ladies. I've seen you do this. Don't deny it. In a car, one hand on the steering wheel. All right. Cell phone here, driving down the highway, putting lipstick on in the in the mirror. Unconscious competence. There's no thinking about the mechanics of driving. Wait a minute. Okay, so I accelerate this amount. I hold the steering wheel here. All right. I look to my left. I look and you're not going, that's in the beginning. You have left thinking. When you first started to learn how to drive, it was all thinking. Wait, wait a minute. When do, when do I look back again? When do I put the right sig turn sig? Now you do it effortlessly. Guys, you get up from your desk while being on the cell phone, on a call, talking to someone, walk to the kitchen, open the refrigerator, grab a bottle of water, come back, sit down. You didn't go over the mechanics of, okay, I walk three steps here, make a right at this wall, walk 12 steps to the kitchen, make a left into the kitchen. Then I turn 100, I turn 90 degrees to the left. That's the refrigerator. I, I put my right hand against the handle. I pull the door open. In the door, down at the bottom section is the bottle of waters. I grab a bottle of water. I put that in the left. You're not thinking about that. But look at a baby who's just learning to walk. And you can see their deliberateness. They're on the couch and they see the coffee table just a little bit there. They have their left hand on the couch and they, they want... They see something on the coffee table they want, but they're unsure of their step. Are they going to make it? And they go for it. Maybe they fall down. Now, you just reach over to the coffee table and grab what you want. You're not thinking about it. We have unconscious competence in our life all the time, but how many of you have ever thought about the fact that you have to raise yourself to the level of having unconscious competence in your trading? If you are thinking, it means you are confused. It means you are incapable. The baby thinking is incapable of doing it fluently. The person learning to drive is incapable of doing it fluently. Their thinking is the proof that you're confused. Let me ask you, let me ask you this. If I were to ask you, um, let's say, let me, let, me, let me pick a name here. I'm going to pick a name here, guys. I'm going to pick somebody out. Let's do it. Let me pick somebody out here. Let's see. Who am I going to pick here? SK Prince. All right. SK Prince here. Now, I don't know if you're married or you have a girlfriend or whatever. Well, whatever. Let's say you're married. Do you, are you married, SK Prince? Want to tell me real fast? But anyway, let's say SK Prince is married. All right. And... We have plans to meet each other. I've never met his wife before, okay? And I said, ah, ah, uh, SK, what's up? What's up, buddy? How are you doing? Good, good to see you. Good to see you. Um, is that your wife? All right? If SK thinks, wait, wait, Oliver, let me think. Um, she was my wife when we left the house. Um, she was my wife in the car on the way here. I think she's my wife. Dude, SK dies. Do you understand? SK, rest in peace, SK. When you know, you do not think. I know that's my wife. If I were to ask you what your name is, 
You don't have, wait, let me think. What is my name? What, what, did my, what did my parents name me? But if I were to ask you, wait a minute, from where you are, how many miles from where you are to the Statue of Liberty in New York City? Now you've got to think because you don't know. So thinking, the very act of thinking is proof that you don't know. Now, let me take you here, traders. If you don't know, should you be risking your family's money? Um, family, I don't know, but I'm going to risk the family fortune. If you risk my money, when you don't know, you get fired. Do you understand? You should not be placing a trade unless you know. I know that's an elephant bar in positive territory, igniting off of the rising 20 period moving average. I know this. Now, I think it's a buy. I think it's gonna go up. I think if you, if you went to a professional money manager, if you want you and your family, you wanna give, you're thinking about giving your fortune that you worked your whole life for to this money manager. And this money manager says, um, you ask this money manager, so do you think you can do pretty well over the next two, three, five year period, whatever? I think, I think I can do, I think so. Dude, no, but <laughs> thinking is overrated in our society. We teach our kids to think it's wrong. Thinking is overrated. Think, son, think, son. I've even fell trapped to that. No. Thinking is overrated. Thinking is like a hammer. It's useful sometimes, but it is not. We go around. Imagine using a hammer for everything that you need to use. You need a pencil. You take the hammer out. Right? This is, this is where our society has brought us to with thinking, right? You, you, you need a screwdriver. Oh, let me get my hammer. All right? I need a spatula because I'm cooking eggs. Wait, where's my hammer? Hammer. I need the keys to my car. Where's the hammer? What if you pulled the hammer out for everything you needed in life? That, that's stupid, right? Well, thinking is a hammer. It is one tool that is greatly overused for everything. What's the difference between this? Let me give you something. If you were to walk down a New York City street and you see a homeless person, which is not, especially now, it's not all that uncommon, right? Having a freaking argument all by himself, yelling and cursing at the top of his lungs, no one's around. You would say, that person has a mental illness. That person's crazy. What is that person's enemy? His thoughts, his thinking. When you take thinking too far, you become that person. Mentally ill, freaking crazy. It's the opposite way we have to do not more thinking less thinking the expert doesn't have to think anymore you're overthinking traders you're keeping your you you've got yourself all tied up in these analytical lots you see a buy and you're like but wait a minute wait a minute let me check my pulse let me check the s p let me check what the Nasdaq's doing. Wait, let me check this indicator. Let me check that indicator. Let me check which way the wind is blowing. Wait, let me check the planetary alignments first of, of Saturn and Uranus. You're freaking thinking too much. Just hit the darn buy button, right? 
<laughs> Will Smith that buy button. You guys know what I'm saying? Will Smith it. You get that ju- nice bull elephant green bar in positive position right at a rising 20 period moving average. Will Smith that buy button. Hit that buy button. No thinking, no hesitation, no checking, no rolling bones, no calling up the psychic hotline, no checking with mom. Just Will Smith the buy button. Right? It's we need to go the opposite way of of thinking. (laughs) I know some people say, Oliver, you're crazy. Like, really? You're just finding that out? My kids always tell me, Dad, you stopped growing up like when you were 19. I'm like, wrong. When I was 16, I stopped growing up. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, let's take some questions. Let's take some questions for you. I, I always kind of go too long because I get riled up with these things, guys. You know, I've seen so much. Do you understand? I've seen so much in 41 going on 42 years. It's crazy. Trey says, just bang that thing, man. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and talking about Will Smith, that button, guys, right now, just like this, you know this is what you need. So listen, the way you pay me or show me appreciation, it just hit the, Will Smith that like button, hit it now, hit that like button now, Will Smith it. All right. All right, Mr. Thoughtful. Listen, Oliver, I heard you say years ago that horizontal price action favors the bulls on a two minute chart. Is that still your take? That's very incorrect. So please, Mr. Thoughtful, be a, be a bit more thoughtful. I, maybe you misunderstood me. It depends on where that sideways lateral action is happening and what happened before the sideways lateral, lateral, lateral action. So let me show you this, right? Let me show you this. Check this out. Okay? Let me show you this. So... I'm going to move this out of the way and I'll show you what I mean here, right? If a stock has dropped hard and then is going sideways like that, the next move favors the downside, not the upside. Conversely, this favors the upside. Okay, so a lot depends on the, a lot of things, the narrowness of the sideways, the position of the sideways in relationship to what happened, the move, the move that happened to the left of it, how violent was the move to the left of it before the sideways action, how far away from your, your, your closest major moving average are you declining 20? Boom! Is your 20 declining or rising? You see what I'm saying? So there's a lot that goes into coming up with the probability of a breakout of the sideways or a breakdown. But just generically, two-minute sideways movements have a bias to the upside, that's very incomplete and very, very wrong, all right? So no, I didn't say that, never. Sorry, all right, okay. (laughs) All right, guys, what else here? What what other questions do you have? Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, um, Alejo is asking uh, Oliver, what, wait a minute, do I have this wrong? Oh yeah, I do have this wrong, sorry. All right, I have this wrong. Okay, 
So Alejo's asking, um, uh, why, let me see here, let me get the question here. Why don't, Oliver, why don't you use exponential moving averages? I think he means instead of simple moving averages. So guys, look, if you are married to exponential, use exponential. Remember what I'm always reminding you of. Moving averages are not the skinny lines that your trading platforms would have you believe. They are areas. They're zones. They're almost like fences that you can lean on. They're not glass floors or ceilings that shatter at the first point of contact. So I'm tired of traders calling, say, but Oliver, this dipped below the 20 period moving average and moved up. It broke it first and moved up. So that's not a break. That just because it went a little bit below that little line is not a break because that little line is not little or that little line is flexible like a rubber band or like boxing ropes. A boxer can lean against the ropes, right? And bounce back. So there are areas. So the difference between exponential and 20 is just really not that great. So if you're married to exponential, use exponential. Just remember, you're, you're looking at a moving average, not as a skinny line, but as a zone. But I will tell you more specifically that uh, I have experimented with every thing you can possibly imagine. Things that don't even exist anymore that you never heard of. I've experimented with every type of, every indicator in existence, including indicators that don't exist anymore. I've experimented with astrology as it relates to trading. I've experimented with every tool, everything. I was in search of the Holy Grail just like you. I have practiced with every moving average type in existence. And I have found no evidence in four decades that any of the sexier varieties work better. So I always default to the simplest solution. Life has taught me to default to whatever's simplest. This is what life has taught me. And life has taught me that the simple, the simplest solution is the most powerful. Complexity weakens the solution. Complexity weakens whatever you're doing. You make a trading plan too complex, that's a weak trading plan. You make a trading plan where a 12-year-old can understand it, that's a powerful trading plan. So... What's the simplest moving averages? You've got, sim you've got simple, exponential, weighted, triangular. What's the simplest? Simple. All right? I always default to the simple unless I found some empirical proof that something slightly more complex is better. But usually it's not. Usually it's not. All right. <laughs> um, Kaviarasu. Kaviarasu. I hope I'm not butchering your name. I'm so sorry if I am. Um, is asking, uh, Oliver, I'm fearful to take trades. Why, Oliver? Why am I fearful? Okay. This is actually... A very deep question. Some people might too flippantly regard this as very basic, this question. Oliver, I'm afraid to take trades. Why am I fearful? It's very profound. Because, because this trader used why. And whenever you use why, you elevate elevate the question um why without trying you throw why into the universe without trying to answer it and the universe brings something back to you let me help you with this
what are the question is why am i fearful so profound think about this most people don't even know what they're fearing this is why this question is so profound like guys look if your maximum loss per trade is fifty dollars are you really fearing the loss of 50 some of you buy two drinks and it's more than 50 dollars every single day some of you wouldn't even go bother pick up 50 dollars right now if your friend owed it to you You'd be like okay like maybe next week sometime it's not the 50 dollars you fear it's not the money that you fear you fear yourself. You fear that you won't do what you're supposed to do. You don't fear the loss. You don't fear the little change that if this trade doesn't work, you'll lose. Some of you are fearful and you're trading on a demo. So it can't be the money. You fear you. And some of you should fear you. You fear that when, it, when push comes to shove, I won't do what I'm supposed to do. You fear keeping your word. You fear doing the right thing. You fear that when you, everything is on the line, when you're called to do your duty, you fear that you will not do your duty. You fear yourselves. This is easily overcome by removing you from the trading equation. You should not be the trader, especially in the beginning. You should not be making decisions. You should not be thinking. Your plan is the trader. Your plan makes the trade. Your plan works the trade, raises the stop adds when it's supposed to add, takes profits when it's supposed to take profits. You should have a profit-taking rule. You should have profit-taking rules that's part of your plan. I take profits when this. I take profits when this. And I take profits when this. And that's it. That's the plan. I add under these two scenarios. Okay? That's the plan. I raise my stop to break even once the stock does this. That's the plan. And once you put the plan together, you are no longer the trader. And if you find that you're fearful, you have become the trader again. Now, when you start literally letting the piece of paper, the trading plan, do the trade. Oh, the trading plan says I'm supposed to buy here. Big green bar right off of the flat 200 period moving average. Boom, I'm supposed to buy there. Trade, that's in my trading plan. Boom, you buy. Uh, it says I'm supposed to put the stop under the bar because Oliver says don't lose more than one bar. Don't lose more than one bar. It's right there. Put the stop under the bar. You're not the trader. These are not your decisions. These are not the results of your conclusions in the heat of the moment. These things have already been decided before there was a trade. They were written down on a piece of paper. Your piece of paper is the trader. You are the watcher. And if you do this long enough, guess what happens to fear? It starts to weaken and weaken and weaken and go away because fear needs you to acquiesce to it to contain its to re, to keep its power fear is powerless you give your power to fear so when you're fearful you have sacrificed your very own power and you've handed it over to an ethereal thing called fear a thought an idea a mental picture of something going wrong that hasn't happened yet. Do you know that that's really the definition of fear? A mental thought that has not happened and you fear the thought. Let me give you a quick story. 
I have twin girls. They're 16 now. But when they were really little, right, maybe they were like four years old. They were in preschool at the time at four years old. And um, anyway, one of my twin girls, she's a tiny bit more artistic than the other when it comes to drawing. The other's more musical, but then the, I have an, I, one of the, the twin girls is more artistic with her drawings. And at the age of four, I remember her screaming at the top of her lungs, daddy, 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 daddy. I like, what the heck is happening? I run downstairs and she's shaking, shivering, screaming away from a, a, a distance away from the kitchen table. So and she's pointing at the kitchen table. What's the matter, baby? She pointed at the kitchen table. I go over to the kitchen table and I see the picture. She drew a picture of a monster. I'm like, well, baby, what's the matter? She says, the monster, the monster, it's going to eat me. It's going to eat me. I'm like, well, baby, listen, 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 sweetheart. You drew the monster. That's your creation. You have given this thing life. You've given it the power. It, it's not going to do anything to you unless you wanted to do something to you. You created it. There's no reason to fear your own creations. This is what all of you do. You're about to take a trade and you create this thought of losing. What if this is another loss? What if I'm not right? You're creating this picture of a monster, and then after you create it, you say, oh my God, oh my God, no, a loss. <laughs> You're like my four-year-old daughter. Guys, come on, grow up. Get that trading plan in place and give the power to the piece of paper and say, look, it's not my decision anymore. You won't even be afraid to lose anymore because you're like, it's not my fault. It's the piece of paper's fault. The piece of paper told me to buy that. I didn't, I didn't do that. That's how you conquer it. You're afraid of yourself. <laughs> yeah, you're my babies. Goo goo gaga. Locks, OV is legend. Stick to the plan, guys. I, th I appreciate that, Locks. Thank you very much. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Gee says this is so true. Thinking means you don't have a plan yet. That is so true. If you're thinking, how, how do you think with a plan? That's so true. That's a good point right there. Great point there. I love it. <laughs> uh, Jam says, Oliver's the master of his craft. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I wish his books were in audio format. We're actually working on that, by the way. But yeah, you're right. Goo goo gaga. All right, what else here, guys? Guys, all right. Uh, Anshul is saying, uh, "Sir, how much time does it take to know the pulse of the market through charts, and when the chart starts to look looking boring?" So I think I think what you're saying is basically. I mean, generically, I think you're asking uh, how much time does it take to become proficient, become to reach a level where you almost feel what the market's going to do next. And this is real. But you have to be careful because in the beginning, your feelings betray you. You can't trust them. In the beginning, your thoughts betray you. You can't trust them. In the beginning, your ideas fail you. Your beliefs fail you. You cannot rely on what you believe. You cannot be rely on what you think. You cannot rely on what you feel, think, believe. These all fail you in the beginning because you lack experience. Feeling can only gain credence, value, after you're experienced. The experience of uh, this being, all I'm saying, guys, is that 
there is a point in your development where your feelings can start to be relied on because they're based on real, personal, deep-rooted experience. Your thoughts then take on creative nature. Not fe They're not containers for fear. In the beginning, all thought is fear. Once you become experienced, thought becomes creative. So in the beginning, you must substitute your thoughts with the plan. The plan is substituting, is the substitute for your thinking. It's the substitute for your feeling. It's the substitute for your beliefs. You sacrifice them and you give yourself over to the plan. How long does it take to reach this? That's the $64,000 question. And really, that's my question for you. That's not something I can answer. How long is it going to take you to do the right thing? How long is it going to take you to get trained? How long is it going to take you to keep your promises? How long is it going to take you to keep your word, I will not lose more than one bar? How long is it going to take you to do that every single time? How long is it going to take you to become disciplined? I don't know. I can't know. I, all I can do is share my experiences, share my knowledge, share what I know, train you, teach you. But then if you don't take that and do something, do the right thing with it, then it's for naught, right? I don't know how long it's going to take you to reach that point where you can read the pulse of the market as if almost like the market whispers in your ear, listen, I'm about to go up. Are you ready? That's real. That can happen because you might be looking at a situation that you've seen tens of thousands of times happen this way. And that will evoke a feeling of excitement, a little bit contained excitement. And this notion, next move is up. I've just seen this too many times. You understand? But before that experience tipping point, for lack of a better phrase, you better ignore every thought, every notion, every feeling, every belief that you have. You put together a trading plan and you give your life over to the plan. That's it. The plan tells you what to do. It becomes a disciple master relationship. It'll change in the future, but ultimately that happens if you stick with it. Uh, I took one from Aleha. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, I think it's Healy or Haley Flight is asking to trust in our wrong to trust in our wrong thoughts because of lack of experience is an ego effect, question mark. Trust the plan, not the ego. That's right. Thought is ego, by the way, guys. We throw this word ego around very loosely, but if you were to ask most people what is ego, they really would have a hard time telling you. But in truth, I mean, Einstein told us that thought equals, thought equals not knowing. Not knowing equals uncertainty. Uncertainty, all right, equals basically ego. When you think of a rose, the thought of the rose is not the rose. So when you act on a thought, you are not acting on reality. Do you understand? The thought of my wife is not my wife. My wife doesn't need my thought about her. She is my wife. Do you understand? But when I put a thought between us, I break our relationship. The thought now of my wife stands between me and my wife. And if she has a thought of me, We've got two thoughts in the middle of our relationship. But if we were to drop both thoughts, we relate 
purely. Thinking is overrated in our society, in our lives, in our relationships, and in our trading. The thought of a stock or a play is not the play. The thought is not necessary to relate directly with it. And so when you have a thought of this being a buy, but the reality is that it's not a buy, but you have a thought that it's a buy, guess which one you're gonna give your loyalty to? Reality or the thought about what you think reality is? You're gonna give your loyalty to the thought every single time, why? Because that's your child. What are thoughts called? Your children, right? My thought child, is that what they call it? I think so. Anyway, we give our loyalty to our own creation, but there is a creation that doesn't need our thoughts called reality, right? And so I spend a lot of time getting my traders to stop thinking. See, I teach them pictures, see this picture? Fat green bar sitting on top of a flat 200. Buy that. Don't think, don't guess, don't hesitate. Buy it. When you see this picture, buy that. Put the stop underneath the bar. It doesn't need your thoughts. That picture doesn't need you to think, traders. Do you understand? Your thinking will cover it up with something that doesn't need to be there. That's ego. Because really what you're saying when you're thinking is, you're saying, I create reality. I know, what is denial? Let's say you're stuck in a losing trade. The trade is going against you. But you don't cut it because you believe that it's going to turn back to the upside. That is ego. It is, you have this picture that you have created in your mind of your losing trade turning around, of the stock turning around. That is your creation. That is not what the stock is doing, but you have created the picture of the turn in your mind. And you, by holding on, are giving more loyalty to your own picture, like my four-year-old daughter gave more loyalty to the picture of the monster she drew. You're giving more loyalty to the turn up that you have painted yourself. And you say, forget reality. I create reality. It's my thought that matters. It's my drawing that matters. It's my mental image of what's going to happen that matters. So I'm going to sit here, even though reality is proving to me that my picture's wrong in my mind. That's ego-based denial. And the root evil is thinking. Thinking is overrated. Guys, listen, I love you so much. I love you to death. You know this. I love these sessions. I've already gone too far. And I think one of my, the culprit is that I just got tied up going over those items that I think are the most common items for losses. But still, I hope that some of what I shared with you is valuable today. All right. If you have to watch the video again or watch the session again, please do. Guys, listen, if you're not subscribed, please do so. I have some amazing plans, right? that's going to come up on the channel. I want you to be here. I don't want you to miss anything. So subscribe, click the bell in the upper right-hand corner, turn all notifications on. Be careful out there, guys. There's a lot of fake Oliver Velezes. There's a lot of scams going on that's trying to take your money in my name. Just be careful, all right? I need you to be extra careful, right? I don't want anyone hurt in that fashion, okay? All right, so guys, listen, there is one thing I just want to, I just want you to, what I want to remind you of here is that I am having, right? I am having my, I'm going to do this. I am having my last real live in-person live trading camp. 
in Cancun in just a few days, guys, just a couple of weeks here, September 10th, 11th, and 12th. It's three days live. We will trade together. We will spend time together. We will laugh together. We will learn together. We will become more knowledgeable about markets together. We will learn specifically my 20-minute trading approach to earning a living in the markets, just 20 minutes a day. This is what the live trading camp really focuses on. We spend three days together, but this is actually an 11-week program, guys. So after these three days, 10 weeks more, we focus on everything we've learned until you get this right, right? Few seats left, guys. TorOliverVelez.com. Come join me here. Let's do this in one of the most amazing spots on planet Earth. Let's do it together. Let's get to know each other, okay? All right, guys, listen, love you to death. I will see you in the next session. All right, enjoy the rest of your trading day, guys, and be careful out there and take care of each other. Ciao for now. Boom. Boom. And another one. That's right, another one.